Good morning. We are a bit early today to make up for being late last week. <laughs> or really just to make sure the technology was working and we weren't late this week. But hello if you are watching us live and you are joining us today to draw our Arctic Fox. Oh, we've got people joining us. We've got Hi Claire, Denen, Jill, Emily, Freya. If I miss people, because I think we've got more people coming today than we've ever had before, if I do miss you, I apologise. Hello to everyone. I'm going to try and say as many hi's as I can. Steph, Susie, Lunify Arts, hello. So yeah, nice relaxed draw along today. We're still in the Arctic. So last week we were looking at the polar bear. This week we are drawing this gorgeous Arctic fox, which is your favourite, isn't it, Michael? Yeah. So I think actually of the four that we're doing this turn, this might be my favourite too. And I think a lot of people are looking forward to drawing this guy. Hello, Rosie. Hello, Molly. Thanks for joining us. Loads of new people again. Where have you come from? Where have you been? So if you are new to us, we do this every Monday during our term times. We've been running these for over a year now and they will always be free so that we're never going to ask you to pay anything for them. We're giving them free to the community because we all love drawing and we love drawing animals. So we're going to keep doing it. Hi to Alex. Hi, Kirsty, Tyrone. I think I miss people. Hi, Molly. Uh, Fred. Hello, Sci Science Alliance. Oh, what's this? I know as well, big shout out to Lara from Theatre of Science because she tagged us in a post yesterday and I think that might be where some of you come from. So that's awesome. If you haven't already been familiar with Lara, then do go over and check out her Facebook page as well. She's got an amazing website that she's built with loads of free science resources as well. Hi Eden. Right, I'm going to start by sharing a couple of Arctic Fox facts before we start drawing. So as well as drawing, we're going to share some information and learn more about the animal as well. So it's like a project-based learning really. Clara said, should, be the, should there be sound? We can't hear anything. Oh no, is that the case? Can people not hear us? Can someone confirm if you can hear us? That is, we are called, that's why we're called Science Alliance. Oh, okay. I'm, I'm assuming sound is working. It might just be a problem with one individual, Claire. Um, there's no point me saying that if you can't hear me. <laughs> but sound is on. Okay. Awesome. So, to begin with, first fact of the day, there are eight recognised subspecies of the Arctic fox. The Arctic fox numbers are believed to be at at least several hundred thousands in the wild, which is stable and of least concern at present. So they're not rare, they're not endangered, that's always a bonus. Um, there are things that will affect their numbers, and I'm going to talk about that in a bit in a minute, but they are not endangered, they're, quite, they're doing quite well. Now their populations fluctuate in response to lemming numbers. So lemming are like a little rodent creature and they make up a big part of the Arctic fox's diet. So as they are their main food source when they're in inland areas, consequently most of their populations fluctuate between years in response to lemming numbers going up and down. So if there's less lemmings, there's less food for the Arctic fox, so then they find it a bit more of a struggle to survive. So Arctic fox numbers will fluctuate in response to how many lemmings there are for them to eat. Uh, right, should we start drawing? It looks like loads of people are joining us, so let's, let's get to it. I'm just using a standard HB pencil, nothing fancy here. And I've got watercolour paper. You don't have to have the same as me, you can draw in whatever medium you like because there is no right or wrong answer with artwork. It's your response and your interpretation. And the most important thing, like I say every time, is that we have fun and enjoy doing it. I'm going to show you the colours I've picked out that I'm going to be using today as well. Always a black. I've got a dark brown for the eyes and I've got some lighter browns as well because when you look at the fur, especially around the towel, we can see some brown tones. I've got a grey and I've also added a blue. Now there isn't really any blue tones on the picture but I think I might use some blue in the snow if we get time for that just to make the picture more colourful and bright because we can use our imagination that way and make it our own picture. We don't have to create an exact copy of the photo. So I'm going to start off like I always do, just by sketching a rough outline to make sure I've got enough space on my page and I get the proportions right. I will try and monitor the comments as well. Oh, there's so many of you guys today, it's awesome. So what foxes are my favourite too? Yeah, we're, we're a big fan of foxes in this household, aren't we? Mm. So I'm going to start off by drawing really rough, sketchy shapes. So it won't look anything like a fox, to begin with. This is just so that I can make sure that I've got the proportions right 
and then I'm not going to cut off his towel or something because I haven't put it in the right place on the page. So this is really rough and sketchy. It won't look like much at all to begin with, just lots of scribbles. But however you want to approach your your work is entirely up to you. There's, like I say, this isn't a, you must do it this way and you must follow these rules. I don't like rules. This is more about draw along with me. You can follow what I'm doing if, if you think it might help you. But if you've got your own way of, of working, then that's absolutely fine. And as we draw, I'll every now and then take a little break. My hands seize up sometimes, I get achy hands. And then I'll share some more facts with you. So Lunafire's put, can we see the picture? So the, I can't show you the picture and draw on the page, there's not going to be enough room. So if you need the picture, if you go into the discussion um, tab of the event, you can get the picture from there. So you can either look at it from another device or uh, print it out maybe. I always like to work from a device because it, it allows me to enlarge and I can see bit, um, details a bit more clearly. My printer isn't that, that snazzy to be able to print it off really accurately. So I've got a rough sketch, I'm not quite happy with it at the moment because I think I've gone a bit wonky, so I might have to just move the page around. And I think I haven't put the head in quite the right place, so I'm just going to adjust it. He's got a really fluffy fur coat, and I'll talk about that again a, a bit in a bit as well. And really gorgeous triangular shaped ears. Quite prominent feature isn't it that's a little bit better I'm a bit happy with that it doesn't look like much at all at the moment but it's a good starting point Molly's but can I copy from your drawing because I don't have a printer in my phone no charge absolutely you can yep you can just follow along with what I'm doing if it makes sense to you and then draw that way it's a good way of getting around that problem so when I've quite happy with the rough shape what I'll do is go and rub out some of these lines because it just confuses my brain seeing too many lines on my page and what I want to do now is get the features of the face because I think that's the most important part of this illustration that and his towel I want to make sure that they are really good so the first thing I'm going to do is sort of plot out where I think the eyes go because again that's a really important feature to get right if you're drawing in a realism style you the eyes are what sort of shows the life I think makes something look more real if you get that right so I'm just going in with the first eye and he's not quite looking at us face on so he won't be entirely symmetrical the shapes will look slightly different and working down into his muzzle he's got a really tiny cute nose and actually we can see the details on the nose quite clearly sometimes with photography especially with black you can't see all of it, it just looks like a black blob. But you can actually see his nostrils, so we're going to get those in as well. And I think I've gone off to the side a bit, so I'm going to remove where I put his nose. Make sure I'm happy with the, with the position before I put the details in. There we go. How are you doing, Michael? Good. So, Michael is home ed and he joins us every week as well. Sometimes he helps me out with the facts if I get too... He always finishes before me, so a much quicker artist than me. Oop. So that's the nose in. And then you've got his little muzzle as well. You can see his top lip and the bottom lip. I'm assuming he, don't know why. I assumed the polar bear was a she last week because she had her babies with her. And it, generally speaking, it's not the male polar bears that bring up the babies. But this week I've, I've gendered our fox as a he. have to give him a name as we're drawing. Fred the fox. That doesn't sound very Arctic-like, does yeah. it? <laughs> oh, thank you, Jo. She, Jo's just shared the link to our reference image if you're struggling to find it. A lot of what we're drawing today is going to be focused on creating this gorgeous fur coat and showing texture and the length in his fur. 
but it varies all the way around his body. So if you, you know, around the ears, he's got very short fur. He's got sort of medium fur all around his face and his tail has got really, really long fur. And they do use their tails as a way of keeping themselves warm. I think I've made the eyes a little bit too big, so I'm just going to make them a bit smaller. And I'm sketching in roughly some of these markings as well, because he's not pure white. As we look at him, we can see that there's other markings going on. He's got some grey and black in there as well. Looks a bit wolfy, really, with some of his markings, doesn't it? Mm. And so now I'm going to go in and do some of the fur, fur texture as an outline to work from. So I'm just sketching really roughly. How do we make the face look white, not grey? That's from Emily and Freya. So hopefully I'll be able to explain that when I start adding tone. But I'll just use grey, but I won't colour it in. I'll use grey to create fur line strokes. So I won't be shading in grey, not in completely anyway. But I'm way off that yet. <laughs> I'm not there yet. really want to make him look really fluffy because he is so I'm just sketching him he's even got a little grey stripe going down his back so yeah it's not pure white at all lots of colour and shade in there and then the fur on his tail is much longer and shaggier so my pencil strokes will, will show that it will, they're longer strokes to look like shaggier fur Around the bottom of his legs, it goes much shorter, so you won't see as much texture. But you can see a bit more of the structure of his bones and stuff, so we'll add that in as well. Hi Sam, Julie says, I love your drawing. Thank you, it's very kind of you. I love all your drawings, I love watching... So, if you again if you're new and you weren't already aware not only do we have the, the draw along as a free event but later this evening there'll be a post that goes up on our main page so if you haven't liked and followed our page already make sure you do that so you don't miss that notification and we post a picture of my finished drawing and you're invited to post in the comments your finished drawing and I will give you some written feedback so I'm um, I used to teach in schools, but now I just work with home ed learners. Um, so I'm a qualified DT and art teacher, and I can give you some written feedback telling you what you've done amazingly and what you could do to improve and to develop your skills on. So you don't have to, but if you want to share your work, you just post under the photo of my finished picture, and that post will go up at around 6 p.m. tonight, and you just need to post before 9 p.m. That's when I clock off. So um, sometimes... I've suggested in the past that if you're worried you're going to forget, just set an alarm on your phone or something so that you know to check the Facebook page and to upload your work. So we can't really see much of his paws because they're, they're buried in the snow. So that's actually a really bonus of this photo because sometimes hands and paws and feet can be quite tricky to draw. So we can just have them buried in the snow and miss that bit out. It's quite handy, isn't it? So that's my sketch... First of all, I know I actually think his head's too big on my picture. I don't know if I've got time to fix it or not. Because when you look at the image, he's got quite a small, cute face. And I think I've made it, he's, the proportions aren't quite right. But it's not the end of the world. He's still recognisable as a fox. I think what I've probably done as well, the eyes are too high up on the head. They probably need to be a little bit lower down. So it's good. You know, whatever your ability is, however long you've been drawing, it's good to constantly evaluate your artwork like I'm doing now. I'm, I can see ways that it could be improved. You can you can never complete art. You can never finish it. There's never a day when you go, I've, I've completed art now. So even me, with my far too many years, I am constantly critiquing my work and trying to find ways that I can improve it. 
So, Joseph is sleepy this morning, but we were watching and we're joining soon. Uh, do you know what? We were a bit sleepy this morning, weren't we? We struggled to get started, so we can appreciate it. I think it's this cold weather. It's not helping. We just want to go into hibernation. Thank you so much for joining Arctic Fox. They're our favourite, along with pandas and red pandas. All oh, red pandas is coming next term. I think it's time for another fact. So, I said about these fur. Arctic foxes are well adapted to living in icy cold environments, such as the Arctic. They also have short noses, ears and legs. This combination gives the Arctic fox a very compact body that helps them to stay warm because if they had a wider surface area, there's more space for them for their heat to escape from their bodies. So they take full advantage of this while sleeping, curling into a small ball. They curl themselves up like a, like a cap and tuck in their noses and, and feet underneath the thickest parts of their fur. So they use their tail to, like a blanket really to help them keep themselves warm. I can't see the nose. I'm struggling with the nose. See, I think I've drawn mine a little bit wolfy. Like, I'm tempted to change the eyes. He looks a bit wolfy to me rather than fox, but I don't think I'm going to have time, so I think I'm just going to have to roll with it. Or should I? No, I'm going to do it. I'm going to go for it. Ah. And this is the point where I try and redraw the eyes and never get them as good again. <laughs> right. I think they should be about here. That's better. Yeah, I definitely did them too big and I did them too high up. I'm going to redo the face. You do it as well? No, this should not rub it like that. Oh, really? That's better. Sometimes you have to take a chance. That looks better to me. His, very, his eyes look a bit... Change it again. All right, so I'm ready to start using my colours to add in more texture, tone and colour. Just about, I'll just get rid of some of those messy lines again. So this is the fun bit. So I've never drawn an Arctic fox, so I can't go on past experiences. I'm learning along with you guys. I always start with the eyes because I think that should be the focus of the picture. Um, and it... I think it's important to spend enough time on that, making sure you get them right. So he's got a black pupil and then a dark brown iris. And then he's got black, what do we want to call him? It almost looks like he's got black eyeliner on going above and around his eyes before you get to the brown tone. So I'm using lots of black and brown around the eyes. Now you can't see much of a highlight in the fox's eyes, but if you leave a white area on the eye somewhere, on both of them, it's going to bring life to the picture and make it look more realistic. So I'm going to add one in. Mine's actually starting to look good. Good, I'm glad, Susie. I can't do the nose. So Denise's struggling with the nose as well. See, it's a tricky, oh, tricky feature today. Julie's put, no, it, does, it looks like a fox. Foxes are like wolves. They are, aren't they? I suppose they're very similar looking. Right, let's go with the black pupil first of all. And I'm using a nice sharp pencil so I've got good control and I can leave a nice white highlight. Oh no, <laughs> pencil broke. It was too sharp. And then I'm going to go with the brown around that and then back to the black as well. Oh, my pencils are so sharp that the tips have broken off. Abba asks, what's your favourite lesson you've done? In terms of drawing... Hmm. We've done so many now. One of the first, I think it might have been the actual first drawing we did was a standard British fox. And because we like foxes, I think that might have been my favourite. That was over a year ago we did that. Hmm. I think it is up on our YouTube channel though, if you're looking for historic ones. If you look up Technology Triumphs on our YouTube channel, I try and upload them onto there. So it may be sitting there for you. I think it might have disappeared off of Facebook. Oh, Keep persisting, Michael. I believe in you. If it helps, work on another part of the body, take a break, and then come back to it if you're getting frustrated. I do. So, because I've got the black out, I'm going to carry on with the nose. Remember that the variation in tone, so rather than just colouring in all the same, having the different layers and the different tone, so lighter, lighter areas, darker areas, that's going to help your picture look much more realistic. And remember to keep looking back at the picture you're drawing from. Don't rely on your imagination or your memory because it does trick us. Do 
So you've got a highlight across his nose as well, makes it look shiny, so I'm going to keep that in there as well. So highlight our whiter areas. What's your YouTube channel called? It is just Technology Triumphs, I believe. There might be a number after it. But if you look up Technology Triumphs, you'll find our logo. It should be quite easy to find, hopefully. If Joe is still watching, would you be able to provide the link for us? Lunify, oh, I can't do the eyes. See, there's something tripping us. I can't get words out today. Tripping all of us up today, isn't it? Keep persisting. Or like I said to Michael, if it's frustrating you, move to a different part of the drawing and then come back to it. Sometimes you get a bit bogged down and I don't want you to feel like you've got to give up. That's the worst thing. So as I shade, I'm moving my pencil in the direction that the fur is growing as well. Because I'm trying to create the texture. It's not just about the getting the colour and the shapes down, it's texture as well. He's got some black markings all over his ear tips, but it's almost spotty, a bit Dalmatian-like, isn't it? Susie, subscribe to your YouTube channel. I, I wondered that, I just got a notification on the tablet I'm working from, well done. Okay, another fact. Let's have a look. So the thickness of their fur also increases for the winter season to help maintain a stable core body temperature and also to survive the harsh cold conditions of the Arctic. With the ability to physically adapt to survive winter, Arctic foxes never have to hibernate. They change their fur colour depending on the season. Different seasons can mean different climatic conditions and opportunities for the Arctic fox. So its fur colour can change between the seasons for thermal insulation as well as to help blend with its immediate surroundings. So it just it doesn't just have a function to keep them warmer when their coat changes in the winter, it acts as camouflage. So within the spring and summer months when there might not be as much snow and we've got you know, more browns and greens, then their fur goes dark and browner so that they can blend in and hide from their prey and sneak up on them. That's clever, isn't it? So just like when dogs molt and cats molt, foxes do as well, Arctic foxes do, but it's a much bigger, more dramatic trans transformation. So they don't just get a shorter coat or a longer coat, the actual colour changes as well. That'd be so cool, wouldn't it, if our hair did that? Can you imagine? Colour change in hair. Save me a fortune in hair dye. Right, Do you know if Arctic foxes have any predators? Well, one of the facts I found was that they sometimes follow polar bears. So, presumably to scavenge off of their, their catches. However, I would imagine if a fox was not quick enough, then a polar bear would, would quite happily nibble on a, an Arctic fox. But I think, considering their, their size and their speed and agility, they probably don't have many natural predators. I know that they have been hunted for their fur by humans. Once again, we're, we're good at doing that, aren't we? Um, unfortunately, but I don't think they generally, I couldn't see any information to suggest that they have other predators. With the shading, I'm not just block colouring out, I'm just gently putting in some black and greys where I see them. Have we started? You started again? <laughs> So their summer coat can come in a variety of colours from dark and light grey, charcoal brown to bluish brown coats. So all sorts of variations. And a bit like the polar bear, if 
joined us last week, you'll remember, they have a dark coloured skin underneath their fur. They have a dark skin pigmentation. The dark skin is cut colour is better at absorbing and retaining heat, which can be an advantage, especially in colder environments. So it's it has a purpose, there's a reason their skin is dark, it's in order for them to keep warmer again. I start getting, you'll notice when I'm drawing, I start getting very sketchy with the longer fur. So it doesn't have to be too neat. I've got the main details in, so the fur can be a little bit more rough and ready because obviously it's growing in all, not quite contrasting directions, but there, there's, there's not a, an exact science to it. You don't have to be really neat and draw neat straight lines because that's not what the fur looks like. But I'm also going to bring in some sort of yellowish tones. I can see some yellowish tones in the fur. So I'm going to start introducing them as well. can't do any of it. Yes you can Luna Fire. Don't give up. It will still look, whatever you end up with will still look better than your plain piece of paper that you started with. And don't compare yourselves. I know it's tricky because you're looking at my drawing for example, but don't compare yourself or your artwork to anybody else's because it's your own learning journey. I've been drawing for many many years now. So don't be comparing and just you know, feeling disheartened because you don't feel yours is as good. Because we, we are all our own worst critics. I look at my old work and can see all the mistakes I've made in it because I've been staring at it and I know in my mind what I want it to look like. And you probably are all doing the same as well. That you think, oh, well, I've got this image in my head and not quite the same as that. But I guarantee you, somebody else will be looking at your artwork and saying, wow, that's amazing. frustrating Michael. Why don't you work on the body and then come back to the, to the head if that's causing you a bit of frustration? Let's bring in some grey as well. So I'm not going to try and draw every first round because there aren't enough hours in the day, <laughs> quite simply. So I'm just drawing a few and where I can see the biggest shadows and the, and the texture more clearly. I'm making sure that the fur is shown there, but I'm not going to draw every individual fur. hand again. I might share another couple of facts. So as I said, sometimes they'll follow polar bears. So when they've got a shortage of prey, they'll sometimes follow the polar bears on their hunting trip to scavenge on any remaining scraps left by the bear. Obviously a fox does not need as much food as the bear. Because they're much, much smaller. 
thought this was an interesting fact. A young female Arctic fox made the longest solo journey ever recorded for the species. I thought I had more information on that. Lost, lost me facts. So, uh, in 2018, a young female fox left her den in Norway and travelled more than 3,500 kilometres across sea ice and the vast barren lands of the frozen Arctic to Ellesmere Island in northern Nunavut in Canada. This epic solo journey of thousands of kilometres was made by the young fox in just 76 days, travelling as much as 150 kilometres, 155 kilometres in a single day, the fastest movement rate ever recorded for this species. So foxes can swim as well, so sometimes they have to swim between polar, um, but, but between ice caps, so she must have done to have been able to get from Canada, uh, Norway to Canada. But sadly, her fate remains unknown, but the tracking data has helped researchers understand the importance of sea ice in helping Arctic foxes migrate between areas for food and new territory. That's amazing, isn't it? We've got some more comments. Drawing the fox was was so fun. Oh, nice. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Mine looks like a cross between a sheep and a hyena. <laughs> I'd love to see it. <laughs> I have got some more foxy facts coming, but I'm aware that I need to draw faster, so I'll get some more of my colour down and then share some more fox facts as well. Make sure I get that greyish blackish stripe down his bite back. He's got longer shaggy fur on his back legs as well and then moving into that tail which has also got a bit of that black stripe that you can just see. shaggy long pencil strokes now for his fluffy tail. I'm putting the black on to begin with and then I'll add in some colour afterwards. Input. Mine looks all right. I bet it looks better than all right. I bet it looks good. That's a bit strange. You finished, Michael? Yeah. You happy? No. <laughs> Did this beat you today? Do you know what I think it is? Because it's one of your favourite animals. It was like when I drew the Czechoslovakian wolf dog, I wasn't happy with that. And I think it's because I, it was really important to me. You put a bit more pressure on yourself. That's what I reckon anyway. I'm going to get a bit more shadow in him to make him look more realistic in 3D. Smear on that front leg. My towel body is good, but my face is terrible. Faces are quite difficult to get right because that's obviously an important feature. So again, don't don't beat yourself up. I'm sure it looks a lot better 
then you're giving yourself credit for. Mine is half cartoon, half real. Oh, nice. So you've almost made like a caricature. Yeah, there's no right or wrong. So if you if you didn't want to draw in a realism style, you don't have to. You don't have to be drawing with pencils. You could be using coloured pens or paints if you want to. Everyone has their own style of working. I used to work mostly in acrylic paints, but now I just prefer watercolour pencils for what I like drawing. So I've got most of the black down, so it looks a bit wonky, doesn't it? I think the camera's at a funny angle. Now I'm going to add in a bit more of the sort of yellowy brown undertones as well. Well, I usually draw cartoon store, but I'm trying realism for this, but it's not looking too good. But if you're used to do, drawing a certain way, Molly, and you're trying a new way, it's, there's always going to be a starting point, isn't there? So don't give up on it and um, keep going. See, see what you can produce. Yours looks so good from Ed. Oh, thank you, Ed. I'm sure yours does too. So I'm just... I'm not going to colour the whole thing. I'm just seeing key points where I can see flashes of colour, where the colour looks a bit more definite. And then adding those tones in. So the sandy brown I'm using. It's almost, I think, where the sun's reflecting off a bit like with the polar bear last week. And you can see some darker tones in the towel. I might add in a darker brown as well there. I think it might emphasise the shaggier fur. Phoenix says, your fox is good. Thank you. Oh, you're all so lovely, aren't you? Michael, could you find us a sound bite for an Arctic fox call? But turn your volume down, because last week I think we blasted everybody's ears off. <laughs> we had it. We Michael found some... Um, sand whites or polar bears last week roaring and that was quite ferocious when it came through it was um, very very loud The average litter is 7 to 11 cubs. The largest recorded litter was 22 cubs. Can you imagine having 22 babies all at the same time? My goodness. I don't know if you heard that. Michael's got a call of an Arctic fox. similar really the, to what we hear then from our wildlife the similar sound similar call Now I'm just going in, and this isn't true to the picture, but I'm going in with the black to sort of make darker tones and make features pop out a little bit more. So this isn't, I'm not getting this from the reference picture, I'm using my imagination now to try and make it more bold and to make it make sense to me a bit more as a picture. And we're just going to spend a couple of minutes doing that and then I'm going to add the water so I can get the watercolour element because I'm using watercolour pencils.
So if you were drawing on coloured paper, you could use a white pencil to draw an arctic fox, but as for drawing on white paper, I'm using a lot of black, bizarrely, to show the fur lines, but not doing so much that it becomes a black fox. Is there silver foxes? Mm -hmm. I'll work on them when you take out the teeth. So foxes, if you haven't seen this on a wildlife program, I really suggest that you look it up. They snow dive to find their prey. So if they listen to the lemmings tunneling underground, they listen for them and then they estimate where they're going to be and they jump up on their back legs and pounce into the snow. So sort of dive head first into the snow. If you haven't seen that, YouTube it or look it up. It's hilarious to watch. Sometimes their back legs are just poking up in the air whilst their heads are down in the ground trying to find grab hold of the lemmings. So I'm going to try and, like I said before, add in some blue tones to represent the snow, even though it doesn't look like that on the picture because it's art and I can do whatever I like. There are no rules, no one can tell me I can't. Well, they can, but I wouldn't listen. <laughs> and it just adds another nice color to the picture and makes the picture look nicer, in my mind anyway. And I could do this all the way around, but I think I'm just gonna have it at the bottom of the picture to balance it out a bit. I and put lemon, lemons are not real. I thought they were a myth. No, they are real. They, were t they are a real animal. I hate my drawing. Oh no. That's a strong word to use. I like the eye. The iris of a fox's eye. So I've done it dark brown, but actually that was technically wrong. It's normally a deep golden or yellow or orange yellow colour which is useful against the glare in the icy environment of the Arctic. They possess di hang on, I can never say this right, dichromatic, dichromatic vision, which means they see, uh, dichromatic means two colour. It essentially makes them red, green, colour blind. So they can't see the colours red and green. And the result of that is that fo foxes probably see the world in more pastoral shades than vibrant colours. I think that's the same as dogs. Mm, they're meant to be... Black okay. and white. No, no, I think it's just red and green that they can't see. Hmm. Yeah, do that. You don't trust me, do you? <laughs> I see. So I'm using a really thin paintbrush to begin with the really fine details, and I'm hardly putting any water on it. Blue and yellow. Oh, is it blue and yellow? Because they can, dogs. They can see blue and yellow. They can see blue and uh, yellow. Human eyes have three different types of colours, which allows them to identify combinations of red, blue, and green. Dogs, on the other hand, have only two types of colours, which means they can only discern discern, discern blue and yellow as a well. result. Dogs are red, green, colour blind. Oh, the same as foxes, red, green, colour blind, yeah. Alright, so I'm still using my reference picture when I'm using the water because I don't want to make it up and go along and get it wrong, so I'm just checking back. And I don't want to spread the colour out everywhere because otherwise it will look too dark. I don't. I want to keep him looking like a white fox. Dog, dogs, you know how we see purple? They see purple as um, grey. Oh. Which will be the same for the arctic fox as well. Yeah. They've got the same type of eyes. They see green as white. Weird. Hmm. What do you do if you're done? You could add in some background. You could use your imagination to put in something else in the picture, like a little fox cub, maybe. That would be cute. You could just hang around and listen to more facts as I share them. Or you can be free. <laughs> you don't have to stay and hang out with us if you don't want to. But when you are done, we say that you're never fully done until you've signed your artwork. So somewhere on your artwork, you want to sign your name and then you date it. I normally just put the year, so 2024. That's what all the good artists do, so it's a good habit to get into. And if you are done and you are leaving us, thank you for joining us. But we're, I'm still going to be here for until 12, carrying on. 
don't forget if you want some feedback to make sure you like and follow our page and then set yourself a reminder to post after 6 p.m. Um, I will be drawing next week the Emperor Penguin, which actually I'm really looking forward to. That one's going to have a bit more colour in it and it's going to be a bit more bold. And it's an Emperor Pen Penguin and the Baby Penguin as well. So we're going to draw two animals together next week. If you are interested in art generally, don't forget that we've got all of our previous draw-alongs available on the YouTube channel and you can find them if you scroll down to past events on Facebook. But also you might be interested in some of our courses towards getting qualifications in artistic subjects. And if art and design is something that you're particularly interested in, definitely follow our page because we've got an exciting announcement coming tomorrow for a brand new course. So um, it's going to be offered at a discounted rate, 25% cheaper than all the other courses. And these are for GCSE level courses, but there's no minimum age, so you don't have to be GCSE age to do these courses. So yeah, follow the page for updates on that one. Poems that put, I love the Emperor Penguin are good, so hopefully you'll join us next week for that one. Thanks for joining us this week though. Molly, what age do you have to be? for the, There is no minimum age. There is no minimum age. So if you are ready for it and you've got the time to dedicate to it, the, I can give a guidance age. So for certain levels, so a level one, I give a guidance age of maybe 10 to begin with. But you, we have had younger people do them as well. So it's really about your ability and the time you want to commit to it. We've got a, young, a course for younger people, the entry level that Michael did that last year. We've, you could put, we take learners as probably young as eight to do that one. Um, because there's no deadlines, it doesn't matter if you need a bit longer to do the work. So that's why we can say it doesn't matter how old you are. Can you do it 13? Yep, that's probably the average age, Molly, to be honest. Our level one and two courses. I'd say most of the people of our learners are about your age. So Michael's doing a level one. At, Michael's 11 and he's doing a level one at the moment. No, you're doing two level ones, aren't you? You're doing photography and cake decorating this year. So yes. Joe's put new course, exciting. It was always exciting when you launch a new course. How much time have I got? I've just under 10, not just about 10 minutes. I'll probably just get this done. I don't want to rush the fur too much because I want to keep that texture. So even the brush strokes with the paintbrush are long strokes to keep the texture of the fur. I need to read through my facts again and see which ones I haven't shared with you yet. Uh, so I've, I've already said this, but a bit more detail is about how they hunt the lemmings. So they lift, carefully listen for lemmings moving or burrowing underneath the snow to pinpoint their location by tilting their heads. Our dog does this when she's confused. She tilts her head from side to side. <laughs> Once the prey's located, an Arctic fox can jump several feet in the air and nosedive into the snow to catch its prey. Sometimes it takes more than a few tries, but the effort is the effort that counts. <laughs> they have a short lifespan in the wild. The survival rate of an adult Arctic fox can vary depending on the region and the food availability and the number of predators in the area. But usually they live up to three to four years in the wild. Whereas in captivity they can live up to 14 years. So quite quite a big difference. But they're in the zoo, though, aren't they? They're in the zoo and keep the captive, yeah. My Arctic fox looks like an Arctic cat. Maybe you made a hybrid. <laughs> Mine's like, who knows? 
Can you tell it's not tick box? No. Yeah, you can. No. Yes, you can. Stop. Stop with a negative talk, Michael. Mm. My Arctic Fox has given me the side eye. <laughs> I love how much, looking at the polar bears last week, how many different characters you can get. Even though we, was all drawing, we were all drawing from the same picture, the same reference image, they look, each individual picture, you could, you could see a character in them. Some look really friendly, some look really cute, some looked a bit sassy. <laughs> It's amazing, isn't it? How even just the position of the eyes can make a difference on how it, the outcome looks as a finished piece. Yeah, it turns that my Arctic fox is half cat, half fox. Again, so they, to me, they kind of feel like a, diff, a cross between a cat and a dog. I know they're not, but I think you're on the same line, on the right lines, if it, if it looks halfway in between the two. You can tell where I go in deep concentration now because I stopped talking. Because <laughs> I'm aware that I might run out of time. I think, oh, we're well, okay for time. So, as we know from that Arctic fox that swam 155 kilometres a day. Foxes are capable of swimming, but they don't do it very often. They're most likely to take the plunge when they're migrating and need to travel from one section of sea ice to another, or if they need to hide from predators. So obviously, we've said the numbers are, are quite stable with Arctic foxes, but if climate change continues, then obviously there's, there's going to be less ice for them to be able to use to, to migrate, so that's going to have an impact on them eventually. So once again, human behaviour is having an impact on wildlife and animal numbers because it, it comes down to their, their habitats being destroyed. Sam, put mine looks at you wherever you are. Oh, well, that's, there's a name for that. There's actually a, an artistic term for when eyes follow you. The Mona Lisa does it. So that's actually a really good thing if you manage to do that. Well done. Pie, hi from Pie. Thanks for joining us, Pie. So I've got a little few more minutes that I didn't think I was going to have. So I'm going to just add in a, a little bit more pencil marks around the eyes because I'm not too happy with them. I want them to be a bigger feature. So I'm going to make them pop out a little bit more and look a bit more dramatic. But I want to keep the white highlights still. The nice thing with watercolour pencils is even after you've used the water on them, not happy you can sort of build in more tone and colour once the once it's dry if you try and do it when it's wet it doesn't look so good so that's why I like watercolour pencils they're quite diverse and versatile that's the word I was looking for so I think I might be finished I do get to the point where I keep working on it and I end up ruining it, so I have to, sometimes I have to put the pencils down. And rub out some of the pencil lines that I don't want there anymore. Just smarten it up a little bit. I'm quite happy. 
happy with that. So I'm not finished yet because if I sign it, and that is my Arctic box complete for the day. It's got a nice fluffy towel and really fluffy coat, and that's what we wanted to focus on for this illustration. So I'm quite pleased with that. Pai has asked if you can see your illustration. Do you want to share it? You don't have to. Do you want to share it? You normally do. Yeah, Mike was not very happy with his drawing today. He had to start again. But I think he's instantly like recognisable as, as an Arctic Fox. And actually your, your eye colour is more accurate than what I did for mine. Because yeah, yours is so more cool. amber yellow. Stop with the negative talk. It's it better than the plain piece of paper you started with. I'm going to put it in the bin. No, you're not. <laughs> so, hopefully, you've enjoyed it and don't want to put yours in the bin like Michael was saying he's going to do. He's not going to. I won't let him. It looks great. It's better than mine. Ah, oh, that's from Molly. She's 13. Nice. <laughs> We're our worst critics. We're our harshest critics of ourselves. So, that is the Arctic Fox. We did the polar bear last week. We are moving down south next week. So we've been up in the north in the Arctic region. We're going to the Antarctica next week and we are going to be studying the emperor pen at the penguin bottom. at the bottom. And then the final week will be seal pup from the Antarctic as well. So hopefully you can join us. Don't forget to like and follow the page. If you are new to us, feel free to spread the word as well. These sessions will always be free. If you want to help us, if you want to enable us to give more free provisions, please feel free to leave a review or take a look at our other courses um, or just share the information with other home editors. Let, us, let, let them know we're here. Um, but it's been lovely. I've enjoyed this. My favourite part of my week, it really is, every Monday. I love sitting down to draw with you guys. So thanks for joining us and making it fun. And we'll have some lovely, interesting facts about the emperor penguin and probably just penguins as a whole as well there's lots of different species so loads of information to share with you next week as well don't forget to post your picture later this evening wait you're waiting for a photo of this drawing not a photo not the photo we worked from you're looking for this picture around 6 p.m post with your illustration and i'll gladly give some feedback i'm really looking forward to see what we've done today have a lovely week and i'll see you next week Bye bye, bye.